Okay. All right. So um, I wrote grants for Dodgers Shoes and got several that way, and then um, I wrote some grants through um, uh, the foundation. foundation and got them that way. So I'm one to one, which it makes what we're going to show you a lot easier when you're one to one. And I do think it has a place um, in kindergarten and first grade. Yeah. For the longest time, we heard, you know, how can you use technology in kindergarten and first grade? You know, what can you really do? Kids can't produce. They can just consume. And so Jamie and I, we feel we've worked really hard the last couple of years to take our kids kind of to the next level with that. Um, and I also am one-to-one -one in first grade the same way Jamie did. We've worked hard with Donors Shoes, the Public Schools Foundation. Um, and then our principal was really understanding, too, to kind of help us do what we really wanted when we pitched the idea to her. So the clicker. <laughs> All right. So um, our job as teachers is to match students to the tools they need as learners. And in kindergarten, we, we do need paper, pencil. We, we, we're never going to abandon that. So um, we, we give them these tools, um, and then we couple that with the iPads, and um, what they produce can be pretty amazing. Um, so we feel like the iPad should be used to help students document their learning. Um, we try very hard to produce rather than to consume with their devices. And um, the beautiful part about this is it connects parents to their students. Um, with an app called Seesaw, um, students can show what they're learning to their parents. And so when they come home, they know what they've done at school. And that can build those conversations with their, with their students. And it's also a wonderful, a wonderful way to differentiate um, students that are ready for first, second, even sometimes third grade um, curriculum. We can do that through the use of technology. And then here's some of the tools you, we've heard about Nearpod. It is a wonderful tool. And um, one thing you can do with Nearpod is I can teach a lesson, um, like you see where it says three plus four. Um, that was a Star Wars um, Nearpod that I created. Um, I can ask them, and I just did this this week, so they drew their pictures and um, I can see in real time what they're doing on their devices. So all of their answers pop up to me, and I can say, oh, you, um, you are drawing too many circles. Um, I can see what they need to do. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. Nearpod is wonderful. Also, I give them a code, and, and it's easy to teach them this. It takes a little bit of time on the upfront, but then afterwards, it's worth it. I give them a little code. They type the code into their iPads their lesson pops up. So if it's a student that's ready to do something a little bit deeper, maybe double digit addition, I can give them a Nearpod lesson that would be on their level. So that, that's the beautiful part about that. Also, um, Epic and Myon, those are both um, e-reader e -reader, e um, apps that they use and, and they can read what they want with that um, and it kind of puts their learning into their hands in that way too. They can read what they're in interested in and also it expands our libraries. Okay, um, Osmos. Those are also really neat tools that we, we've gotten. Um, this is actually, I'm going to show you a little video. This is actually her son, Wyatt. He's in my class this year. Um, I actually took his iPad home over the Christmas vacation, and I was going through his um, pictures to see, to see what he was taking pictures of. And I noticed a video that I had never seen before. So on Osmo, there's all kinds of neat things you can do with Osmo. But there's an Osmo Create app. And what he did is it has a little video, it, it has a little mirror that the image will project onto the screen. So he actually looks at the screen and he can draw a picture. Um, and the video, um, the, it, you can see him doing it. And this was done during um, indoor recess one day. And this is what he chose to do. He's interested in art and drawing. And there it is. And so I can send that to her. And she can have his little hands forever on video. So, um, so it connects teachers to students. 
Um, I can see what they're doing even when I'm not there. So this week I went to a technology conference in Orlando, and I'm able to see what they're doing in class. Um, so this week I wrote, I met Moby, and I sent it to them. And so they could see that I met Moby even before I came back. And so when I came back, they're like, oh, you got to see Moby. They were so excited. And then I am on the plane, and I wrote it, in, I wrote it so they could read the words. But... Um, so I can talk to them about things that go on in my life, and um, then they can talk back to me. A little girl sent me a message and said, I love you, I miss you. So it builds relationships. So Seesaw is really what we found. It's an online portfolio, and that's what we're going to kind of showcase, just some of the things that our students have and actually produced themselves instead of just consuming. So as a mom, like Jamie said, my son is in her class, and so she sends videos like this, you know, and just says, hey, this is how we practiced our sight words today. We did a sight word snowball fight. Um, or you can send messages like that. They had rules to the snowball fight. They could not hit each other in the face. They could not run. <laughs> but what they're doing is they're throwing the words. They open it. They have to read it before they can throw it back. So it gets the activity in there, too. But it's just a really good way for parents to kind of see what's going on in the classroom, like Jamie said, um, even, you know, whenever we're not there. And so we're just going to show you some of the things that our children have made the last couple years using Seesaw. Um, so this was a task where we were learning about 3D tool or 3D shapes. Thank you. And they went on a shape hunt inside the classroom. They had to find an actual example of a 3D shape. And then they had to tell me about the sides, the vertices, the faces, the edges. So that's just one way that we tied it in. Um, I also have a QR code gallery in the hallway. And so I showcase some of my students' work. And for those of you that don't know a QR code, you can just scan it, and it pops up something. And so what I do is I have my children reading whatever they have written for that week. And so at various times, we'll go through the, the hallways, and we'll see what everybody's kind of made. And you can actually hear my kids reading their work. So anybody can walk by at any given day and just kind of scan it and see, and we change that out. But that's something my kids are super proud of. And then these last year... We really got big into student choice and letting them choose a topic that they wanted to research on Epic. And so they had books that they read, they took notes, and then they created a Google slide document. Um, and it's kind of like PowerPoint, and we worked really, really hard at uh, making our Google slides. So this was just one student last year, and this is what he came up with, his facts about his planet. It nine years to get to Uranus. Uranus has 13 rings. Uranus has 26 moons. One year on Uranus is 84 years on Earth. It takes 63 Earths to join Uranus. Uranus is the sun. Uranus is the third biggest planet. Uranus is made of the gas and nucleus. So he was a little excited to tell you very quickly <laughs> about all of his facts. Um, but just giving the students that choice. Um, I feel has really made a big impact and even the students that sometimes struggle giving them the technology to show it in that way has made all the difference and the last thing we'll show you this is probably my favorite thing that Jamie does in her classroom she does pattern books for their writing every week and so I can log on and I check my son Wyatt every day look what I did in school today I want to show everybody look what I did and um so it's just a really good way to get the parents involved to help the kids with confidence. <laughs> so he's making a pattern book, but the, I mean, it's authentic learning. He wrote the book himself. He took the pictures. He recorded. You know, he was reading it. And it just, we found that it's really got the kids engaged and it's hands-on. And like I said, it reaches all the, the students and it's very differentiated. So that's what we, we kind of love and what we've worked hard to do for the lower grades at Southside. Before we um, thank them, um, it is amazing, uh, really. Uh, yeah. I never thought that first yeah. graders could make Google Slide yeah. it's amazing. presentations. Um, so before we uh, thank them and introduce our, our next uh, person on the agenda, we have time for just maybe one or two very quick questions. Awesome. I'm just
difficult did you find it to teach first graders how to create a Google Slide? Um, I'll be honest, I had a, an amazing student teacher last year, and so it was kind of an all-day, we're going to make sure Google Slides is on every iPad, and we're going to do it whole group, and we're going to just tag team. Um, and honestly, they catch on a lot quicker than you think. But when I first had this idea, some people told me, wow, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Let me know how that goes. Um, and honestly, my kids made probably six, seven, eight, and they got to the point, I mean, they were in Google Drive. They made their own. I could go through and look at what they did, and they didn't even need any help by the end. Even like my, you know, some of the kids that struggled, they were completely independent, which is amazing. So, yeah. We hope that we have the Topper Academy one day. The Tech yeah. Team, the Topper <laughs> Academy. That's what we're trying to, to shoot yes. for. Yeah. Well, wait, thank you so much for sharing that. And and again, it is just really. Um, it is a journey to try to find that balance mm -hmm. between screen time, mm -hmm. what's too much screen time, right. being developmentally appropriate, but also opening up this world to them. Yeah. Is obviously very engaging and, and can support the learning. Right. Standards. So thank you for sharing yep. that. That was very, very good.